don't worry don't worry the anointing is getting ready to settle the matter the anointing is getting ready to settle the matter don't worry tag a friend tag a friend tag a friend along for this evening tag a friend along for tonight I came with a word of encouragement for someone don't worry I came with a word of encouragement to somebody that's a bit disturbed by things that have been happening don't worry <laughs> I came with a word of encouragement for somebody that's been a bit discouraged do not worry I came with a word of encouragement for somebody that thinks it's over do not worry <laughs> do not worry woman of God it's nice to see it's nice to see you I see you Queen don't worry don't worry the anointing is getting ready to settle the matter don't don't worry about it don't worry about it the anointing is getting ready to settle the matter I have a word that I believe is going to encourage someone you've been feeling a little under the weather don't worry don't worry You've been feeling defeated don't worry don't worry don't don't worry don't worry the anointing is going to settle the matter the anointing is settling the matter the anointing is settling the matter the anointing is settling the matter I see you I see you all coming don't worry I don't know whose word this is but don't worry don't worry don't fret don't be perturbed. Don't be discouraged. <laughs> don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up too quickly. Don't give up too quickly. It's 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 too early for you to give up. Don't give up too quickly. Don't give up too quickly. The anointing will do the settling of the matter. The anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage will do the, 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 the sickling. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Tag a friend in the comment section below. Let's get ready to go on this journey tonight. The anointing will settle the matter. The anointing will settle the matter. The anointing, the oil of the anointing will settle the matter. When, when you come back dripping with oil, when you come back dripping with oil from your head, it will settle every pending matter. It will settle every pending matter. So don't worry. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't fret. Don't be discouraged. Tag a friend in the comment section below. Let's go on this journey together tonight. Don't you worry. I don't know who needs to hear this over and over again because you have told yourself over and over again that it's over. Don't don't worry don't worry don't worry don't don't worry don't worry don't be discouraged don't give up too quickly don't give up too quickly the anointing is going to settle the matter I don't know who needs to hear this I don't know who needs to I, I don't know who needs to hear this don't, I don't know who needs to hear this but don't give up too soon it's not too late it's not too late don't give up too soon don't look at the situation and think to yourself we have no chance at this any longer don't give up too quickly don't give up too quickly it's not over until God says it's over tonight I am feeling hot I am feeling excited I am feeling on fire I am sent an assignment to encourage somebody. I just, I just, I just need to keep saying this for somebody. Don't give up too quickly. Don't give up too quickly. The anointing will settle the matter. Don't give up too quickly. Don't, don't give up your position too quickly. I don't know who's, I don't know who's hearing this. I don't know who's hearing this. Don't give up too quickly. If you have your Bible close to you, if you have your Bible close to you, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you this evening. I hear, I hear don't give up too quickly. I hear don't give up too quickly. I hear don't give up too quickly. First Kings, first Kings one, the book of first Kings, the first chapter, the book of first Kings, the first chapter is you're opening your Bibles. I just want to encourage somebody. That it can't be over. It, it can't be over. Surely it can't be. It can't be. It can't be finished. Surely it can't be over. I don't. I don't know what you're going through, but 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 don't give up too quickly. Don't don't let in the towel too quickly. 
don't don't let in the towel too quickly don't give up your position too quickly don't 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 release it too quickly come on somebody come on somebody you ought to encourage yourself in the lord tonight and i am here to encourage you with this word do not give up too quickly i don't know who needs to hear it but do not give up too quickly we're, we're about to enter into the word. We're about to enter into the word. And I just want you to tag a friend in the comment section below and just say, don't give up. Friend, don't give up. Friend, don't give up. Friend, don't give up. Um, it's going to make sense in a couple of minutes. Uh, but I just want you to tag a friend and say, friend, do not give up. Now, I want to give you a bit of a background to the scripture that we're about to jump into. And if you have been a part of our, our Bible study on House of Hosting Heaven, the book of we've been studying the book of first kings and we have been um going through this story this very fascinating story and just a little bit of background of what's happening in the book of first kings chapter one we're finding david in his old age we're finding king david um after fighting many battles after fighting many battles after winning many triumphs after 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 getting many many after recovering much ground for god you know he is now in his old age and as 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 david is in his old age he hasn't really specifically vocalized who should now ascend on the throne he has not yet clearly laid out his succession plan i don't know who i'm talking to i don't know who i'm talking to but David is old and he's still king and he's sitting on the throne, but he's too old to even sit on the throne. And he has not yet vocalized his succession plan to the rest of the people. He has not yet vocalized the succession plan even to his advisors, to his close-knit group of people, right? Close-knit group of friends. He has not even vocalized who is supposed to succeed him on the throne. Uh, today, I'm here to address some chances. I'm here to address some chances because there are certain things that God has preordained and destined for you to have. There are certain places, areas that God has already predestined that you are supposed to occupy. And th there are some chances in life. There are some chances in life who, 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 who have a habit of of anointing themselves, anointing themselves into the positions that God has already preordained and destined for his children, that God has already preordained and destined for his own, that God has already set apart and set aside for his favored ones. So I'm here to address the chancer, but I'm here to encourage you because don't give up too quickly. Don't worry. The anointing is going to settle the matter. Why are you so discouraged when there is oil? <laughs> Why are you so discouraged when there is oil that can settle this matter? So background, we're saying David is old. And David, once he's old, he hasn't really vocalized to many people the succession plan. He has not yet vocalized who is supposed to sit on the throne. So today we're finding a young man who, the, who, who, who actually was one of David's sons. And his name was Adonijah. I'm here to address Adonijah today. I'm here to address your Adonijah today. I don't know what Adonijah you are currently currently facing in your life. But I'm here to address Adonijah. You see, Adonijah was one of David's sons. But he was not the son that was meant to succeed him to the throne. David had already spoken and promised to Bathsheba that Solomon would be the next king in line. You see, a lot of people look at, at, at people that, uh, that sit in positions, uh, positions of influence or sit in positions of power and they think that it happens by chance. But I'm sent on assignment today to, 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 to tell somebody <laughs> there are chances out there. There are chances out there. I need to drink my water because we're about to go on a journey tonight. We are about to go on a journey tonight. We find a young man named Adonijah. And as we're finding a young man named Adonijah, the Bible says that he had conferred. <laughs> they confer. The chances confer. They always have somebody to confer with. I don't know what it is with chances, but they always find somebody to side with them. The chances of this life, I don't know what it is about them, but they always find someone to confer with. Because let me tell you something, no matter how light you are, 
No matter how people are excited when you come around, no matter how favored you are, there is always people that your chances can confer with. There is always people in your life that don't mind siding, that don't mind siding with the chancer. There are people in your life that do not mind siding with the chancer. The Bible says Adonijah conferred. He conferred with Abiat the priest. And he conferred, uh, with, he conferred with Joab the son of Zeruiah. And he anointed himself king. He paid some people that he could be anointed as the next king of Israel. He, he released some money, asked for some favors, gathered around some people who were not will, who were, who were, who were, who were definitely willing to side with the chancer. And he was anointed king. Now he has been anointed king. The Bible says that he was, he was seated on a feast, getting excited, getting excited about his own anointing getting excited, celebrating with the people that he had conferred with. When the Bible says Nathan went to Bathsheba and he said to Bathsheba, Bathsheba, do you know what has been happening in the city? Bathsheba says, what do you mean? I, I'm not too sure what's been happening in the city. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the palace. You see, some of you are too high to have your ear on the ground. You, you've gotten so high that you no longer even know how to have your ear on the ground when on the ground is where the action is taking place. But she says, I've, 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 I've spent the whole day, you know, in spas and getting my skin toned. What do you mean what's been happening in the city? Nathan says, let me tell you something, but Sheba, something has been happening in the city that you need to be aware of. And the reason I, I want you to be aware is because I want you to act very urgently and I want you to act very quickly. Do you know the young man named Adonijah? Do you know the young man named Adonijah? Well, Adonijah has anointed himself king. And right as we are speaking in this moment, he is sitting on a feast and he is celebrating his own anointing and he is celebrating that he is now king but Sheba is shocked but Sheba did not know this was happening so now but Sheba no longer knows what to do Nathan says let me tell you what to do do not panic do not panic I want you to go to King David and I, and I want you to remind him of the words that he told you concerning your son Solomon that he should be the next king of Israel. I'm just giving you a little bit of background. I don't want to take long on this. I don't want to take long on this. I don't want to take long on this. The title is Don't Worry. Don't worry. The anointing will settle the matter. Don't worry. Don't worry. The anointing will settle the matter. <laughs> I know this, this, this thing happening in your life looks big, but don't worry. The anointing will settle the matter. Don't, don't, don't panic. Why, why are you always panicking? The anointing will settle the matter. So Nathan says to Bathsheba, I want you to go to the king and I want you to let him know what's been happening in the streets. So quickly and immediately, Bathsheba runs to David and says, David, my king, I thought you promised me that my son Solomon would sit on the throne after you. What is this thing that I hear that Adonijah is now sitting on the throne? And as soon as she finished, Nathan entered right in and agrees with her and says, It is true, my king, Adonijah has anointed himself king and he has conferred with other vagabonds. He has confirmed, conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruah, and with Abiath, the priest, and they have anointed him king. I don't know who I'm talking to, but don't worry. Don't worry. The anointing will settle the matter. I mean, I mean, in your, in your strength, you can't settle the matter, but the anointing will settle the matter. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. So now David, we're finding David in the book of 1 Kings 1 verse 32. David has just heard what has been happening in the streets. And all of a sudden, he has just realized that a coup has taken place. Now this old king finds some strength to stand up. He is agitated in his spirit. The old David comes back. The old David who understands battle and strategy comes back. He says, Call Zadok, 
the priest. Call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehuda. So they came before the king, the Bible says. Then the, the, the Bible says, the king also said to them, Take with you the servant of the Lord, referring to Sol Solomon. I don't know which Solomon I'm talking to today, but don't matter. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't be, don't be perturbed. The anointing will settle the matter. He says, take the servant of the Lord. The servant of the Lord. Take with you the servant of the Lord and have Solomon, my son, ride on my own mule. And take him down to Gihon. There let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel and blow the horn and say, long live King Solomon. Long live King Solomon. <laughs> then you shall come up after him and he shall come and sit on the throne and he shall be king in my place. For I have anoint, appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to today. <laughs> but scripture says where the words of a king is, there is power. You see, there are people that come and they and, and, and their and they're chances. Like I say, their chances. We will always have chances in life. We will always have people that, that are going to be chances. <laughs> There are thrones that are specifically designated for those that are favored by God. But let me tell you something. There are many chances in this generation sitting on thrones. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10 verse 7, it says, I saw a strange thing under the sun. That the slaves were driving on horseback while princes were walking on the ground. I'm going to repeat that for somebody. He says, I saw a very strange thing under the sun that the slaves were on horsebacks, but the princes were walking on the ground. I don't know who I'm talking to, but let me tell you something. We live in times, we live in seasons where there are chances. Where there are chances. There are people who do not have a problem sitting in positions where they know for a fact they have not been anointed for. They have not been appointed for. They have not been prophesied for. They have not been skilled for. They have not been taught and pruned for. And here you are coming out of the wilderness. Here you are coming out of obscurity. And you know that vision that God gave to you. You know that dream that God gave to you. You know the prophetic word over your life. And you're asking yourself, how am I going to sit on this throne? Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. The anointing is going to settle the matter. <laughs> because God wouldn't have called you if he hadn't anointed you. God wouldn't have called you if he hadn't appointed you. God wouldn't have called you if he hadn't qualified you. They could be kings that have self-made themselves. They could be kings that have self-appointed themselves. They could be kings that have paid money to get anointed into certain positions. But don't worry, Solomon. The anointing will settle the matter. I want us to quickly look at a few things. I get excited about this. I'm getting excited about this. I want to quickly land this. I want to quickly land this. As I'm landing this, I want you to know something. David says, I want you to take three, I want you to take three groups of people. I want you to take the priest. I want you to take Solomon. Go down with him to Gihon. We're going to touch Gihon in a second. He says, I want you to take the priest. Because the priest will be carrying the oil of the anointing. He will be carrying the horn filled with anointing. Because we, we, we are seeing Adonijah who has anointed himself. But even though he has anointed himself, nothing beats the true anointing. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but nothing beats coming out of the secret place where God has been positioning you, preparing you, pruning you, practicing you for the throne. He says, I want you to take the priest. He's going to carry the horn of oil. Then I want you to take the prophet. The prophet's job is to speak forth into the future of the king. 
because there is no throne that truly stands until you speak forth unto it. Do you have a business? You ought to have times. You ought to have times when people look at you and they think you're a little bit crazy. They think you're a little bit cuckoos. They, they think you've lost it a little bit because you're speaking to this thing that has no flesh and blood. You're saying to, 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 to your business, my business shall pursue, overtake, and recover. <laughs> my business is always provided for. God meets my business financial needs according to his riches and glory, according to Christ Jesus. My business is thriving. My business in the city gets the most prime of clients. My business, say the name of your business and begin to speak to your business. Do you have a child? Learn to speak forth into the future of that child. <laughs> my child shall sit with kings. <laughs> the gift over my child's life shall make room for my child. <laughs> my child shall sit with rulers. My goodness, my child shall sit on the gates and rule. Come on, somebody. My child shall not lack anything. All things pertaining to life and godliness have already been given to my child. Say their name. You ought to enter into a season where you become a prophet. Speaking forth the future. So he says, I want you to take a priest. A priest will carry the oil of the anointing. I want you to take a prophet because a prophet is going to speak forth into Solomon's future. Because you see, Adonijah has paid people to speak forth blessings over his life. Adonijah has paid people to speak forth over his throne. Adonijah has paid people to speak forth over his assignment that he has made himself. So I need a spiritual voice to overturn everything that the chancer had been, everything that had been spoken about concerning the chancer. I need a spiritual person. I need a prophetic voice to speak and overturn everything that the chancer had spoken over their own life. Every ill word spoken about you, Solomon, the prophet will overturn it and he will speak forth blessings onto your life. So take the priest, take the prophet, and I want you to take Benaiah. Benaiah, scholars say, was part of David's mighty man. So what Benaiah is representing is the military wing of Israel. I want you to take Benaiah. Benaiah is going to represent the military because you're going to need some type of protection. You see, Benaiah was part of David's mighty men. And when, as we read scripture, we realize that David's mighty men were willing to die for him. So David says, I want you to take one of these men because I trust them. I want you to take one of these men because they cannot be paid with money. I want you to take one of these men and they're going to contend and fight on your behalf. I want you to take one of these men called Benaiah because he's going to be on your side and he will never turn against you. Let me tell you something in your vision, in your assignment, you're going to need loyal people. You're going to need people that stand by you. Do you know that there are people that are so loyal that they stand by people from generation to generation? There are certain people in this, in this common section where they had grandmothers that have taken care of, of fathers. After taking care of fathers, they've taken care of those fathers' children. After taking care of those father's children, they have taken care of those father's children's children's children. A housekeeper taking care of a full lineage, defending them, feeding them, looking after them, nurturing them. Because there are people like Benaiah. I pray for a Benaiah over your life. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but you need a Benaiah in your vision. There are people who don't have a problem standing and contending. Standing and contending and protecting the vision. Of a, of, 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 of a generation. They are legacy divine helpers. They, they are divine helpers for a generation. They are divine helpers for a generation. They do not mind fulfilling their assignment. They have no problem fulfilling their assignment, which is to strategically position themselves in a place where they fight and contend for one family's vision to pass through from generation to generation. He says, take the priest, take the prophet, and take Benaiah. Then take Cherethites and take Peritites. These were two specific groups of people. Specific groups of people that had not defiled themselves and sided against the chancer. 
Because the chance I had had paid people, yet Adonijah had paid people so that they could vote for him. But let me tell you something. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody right now, to, to, to who it matters. Somebody gets me right now. Somebody is in this exact same situation. The throne, some, somebody already has placed themselves on the position where they know for a fact that God said would be theirs. Somebody has already strategically positioned themselves in a position. They have connived. They have manipulated. They have ascended by hook and crook. And they now sit on this throne, feasting and eating with other people that didn't have a problem, making them and, ma and making them and strategically positioning them into that place for their own benefit. But don't worry. Don't worry because the anointing will settle the matter, Solomon. Don't, don't panic. <laughs> don't panic. King David says, don't take a chariot. Because Adonijah came with, the Bible says he came with horses, a chariot on horses. He had many chariots following him. Because the imposter always tries to look like the real thing. And the imposter always tries too hard. The imposter, oh, the, the imposter will pay money to look like the real thing. The imposter will buy the right label clothes. The imposter will, 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 will try to look like the real thing. The, 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 the imposter tries too hard. The chancer tries too hard. The anointed man doesn't really need much optics. Come on, let me tell you something. When you have the anointing, there's a, there's a certain level of optics that you, do, you no longer need. <laughs> When you have the anointing, there is a certain level of look look that you no longer need. You could look at, or you, you, you don't need to look it because man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. And anyways, what's the point of appeasing man when God is the one that chooses? <laughs> he says, I want you to take a mule. A mule is a breed between a horse and a donkey. A mule was something that was breeded specifically for labor. It wasn't something that a king would ride on. It reminds me of the story of Jesus when the Bible says that he comes on a horseback. He comes on a, on a donkey's back. You see, there's no need for optics where the anointing is. Mm, 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 mm. There's no need for optics where the anointing is. There is no need for aesthetics. <laughs> aesthetics are just but an add-on. Where the true anointing is, where the true appointed person is, there is no need for optics. Some of you, there's too much optics because there's little anointing. There's too much optics because there's little anointing. Increase your anointing and you'll realize, you'll realize that the level at which you command things in the realm of the natural, the realm, the, the, the rate at which things begin to shift and move and take place when you speak forth the word in the realm of the physical, you don't need optics for that. You don't need aesthetics for that. You don't need the right clothes for that. You don't need the right deal for that. You don't need to drive the right car for that. You don't need to, to live in the right zip code for that. Why are you trying too hard? Why so many optics? Why so many wanting to look like it? Why, why, why are you trying too hard, Adonija? Why are you trying too hard? Why are you... Why are you killing these fattened cows for people to eat why are you why are you bribing people to side with you Adonija? because the fake always tries too hard david says don't go with chariots for his protection don't even go with chariots but also for humility take him on a mule ah i don't know who i'm talking to but let me tell you something. God has you in the season of humility. <laughs> the season where you don't even have the finances to look the way you want to look. The seasons where even your ministry, you have incredible ideas that God keeps placing and dropping over your head. But you don't have the finances to, to, to bring it to completion. You don't have the finances to bring the vision to come to pass. But God says, I am taking you through a season of humility. Because let me tell you something, I want you to understand that it is only the anointing that matters. Ride on this donkey like Jesus. Ride on this mule like Solomon on his way for his, to his anointing. Ride on this mule. It's only for but a season. Ride on this mule. He says, take my mule. There is no need to, to prove a point. There's no need to prove a point. 
Solomon, you can go on the mule. There's no need for opulence. There's no need for optics. There's no need to make yourself look like. Because when the real deal comes on your head, oh, <laughs> when the real deal starts dropping on your head, there's somebody sitting on the throne now, but let me tell you something, Solomon, you're going to be sitting on that throne by the end of the day. No need for theatrics, Solomon. There is no need for toil. Don't worry. You don't even need to. I'm not even going to give you a robe. I'm not even going to give you my crown at this point. Priest, prophet, Benaiah, the Cheratites and the Peratites take Solomon to Gihon. Now they say Gihon was, he says, take him down to Gihon. I liked this verse. It says, take him down to Gihon. You see, Adonijah had placed himself in the highest position in the city so that everybody could watch him getting anointed by the people that he had paid. Adonijah wanted a platform where everybody could see his anointing, his fake anointing. Adonijah had to look for a platform where every person in the city would realize that he was now king of Israel. <laughs> David says, I want you to take him down to Gihon. When you, when, you, when you look at the structure of the place where they were situated, you realize that Gihon was at the very end of the city. It was at the very end of the city. And they actually say that Gihon was a primary water supply for the city of Jerusalem. And the Hebrew term is besting forth. This is the, the place where the water supply would burst forth into the city. He says, I want you to take him down to Gihon. Take him to some, to some obscure place where there is no man, where there is no military commander, where there is no um, uh, people of, of, of opulence. You know, if you're going to bump into someone there, they are probably just looking for water and they are women. And in those days, women just, were, just, just got water. Women just got water. Take him to Gihon. I want you to take him to a place where nobody watches. I want you to take him to a place where nobody is going to be able to see his anointing. There is not going to be a, a press statement. There's not going to be a live broadcast for this anointing. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of you, when you were anointed, there was no live broadcast. Some of you, when you were anointed, not even your, your, your leaders at church were told. Some of you, when you were anointed, not even your parents knew. Some of you, when you were anointed, it was in such an obscure place that even when you woke up, only you knew that God had done something in the night. He says, take him down to Gihon. There is no need for a public appearance on this one because guess what's going to happen? The anointing, when it falls on the head, it will settle the matter. There won't be any denying. The anointing will qualify itself. I need to tell somebody, the anointing over your head can qualify itself. It doesn't need your help. The anointing over your head can qualify itself. The anointing over your head can do its own job. The anointing comes with a skill set. The anointing comes with a job description. There is a job description that the anointing has been sent on assignment to perform over your life. Permitted to perform it. He says, I want you to go to Gihon. And when you go to Gihon, I want you to pour the oil, the oil over his head. In an obscure place. With a small tribe of people. And those that are able to discern. While you are going there, only maybe then they will follow. But you don't need to call them the military commanders. No, they've been brought over by the chancer already. You don't need to call the opulent people of this land. Nope, the anointing will prove its own point. You don't need to call my advisors. I don't even know who's, who's with Adonijah at this point. The priest, the prophet, Benaiah, the Charitites and the Peritites, go. You don't need to announce this in the newspaper. The anointing will prove its own point. You don't need to announce this on Facebook. The anointing will prove its own point. Oh, there are some people on this live broadcast. God is about to do some powerful things with your life. God is about to pour out in you a new unique oil over your head. Mm. A new unique fresh oil over your head that is going to permit, that is going to cause all the chances and the contenders that have been sitting in the positions that you have been birthed for. 
that you have been birthed for, that you have literally came in this generation for, that you have been sent on assignment for. The contenders have been sitting in the seats, but oh, God is getting ready. God is getting ready to pour out a new anointing. My goodness. An anointing where from the moment that oil is poured over your head in obscurity. From the moment that new oil is poured over your head in places where no one is watching. From the moment where that oil is poured over your head, it would be like as it was in the book of 1 Kings. The Bible says there were shouts of joy from obscure Gihon, down, down in Gihon. There were shouts of joy that were so loud that they could be heard in the city. Oh, the anointing will announce you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the anointing will announce you. There is no need for the audience. Solomon, you don't need to be anointed in the CBD. You don't need to be anointed in the city center where everybody is. There's no need for an audience for the work that God is doing. Mm. There's no need for an audience for the work God is doing. The anointing will legitimize you. I'm saying a word for somebody. The anointing will legitimize you. There is no need for people, for guests to be invited. The anointing itself will legitimize you. The Bible says that then the priest and the prophet and Beniah, Beniah the Cherotites, and the Peritites went with Solomon down to Gihon in the place of obscurity while he was on a mule. And they anointed him there. They anointed him there and there was such a loud cry from down there that it was heard in the city where Adonijah was, sit, was sitting with the people that he had connived with. So much so that the Bible says that as, as Solomon now started to enter into the city, there was already a crowd that was following him and shouting. Where did the crowd come from? Some of you are wondering, where is the crowd going to come from in my company? Where are the people that are going to buy this products going to come from? Some of you are wondering, where are the crowds going to come from in my, in my ministry? Where are the crowds going to come from in the place of assignment where God has asked me to enter into? Where are we get, going to get new, new, new customers in our, in our department where God has assigned me into the mountain of business? Let me tell you something. People are attracted by the anointing. You don't need to gazette it in a newspaper. You don't need to say tomorrow Solomon is getting anointed as king. The people as long, once that oil, once that oil touched Solomon's head, something supernatural happened. Once the oil of the anointing touched Solomon's head, something supernatural happened. I don't know where this crowd came from that was so big that it was able to shout from Gihon that it was heard in the city. But there was, an, uh, uh, there, was, there was a crowd that was attracted by the anointing. Why? Because people follow the anointing. People will follow the anointing. People will follow the anointing. I don't know what you've been going through, but God is settling the matter. I just came to encourage somebody that God is settling the matter. Let's see if we can, we can, we can drop this one in the next few minutes. Let's just see if we can drop this one in the next few minutes. God is settling some matters tonight. God, God is setting some matters tonight. God says, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't, don't worry. The, the anointing is going to settle the matter. Don't, don't worry about it. The anointing will settle the matter. I don't know what's been going on. I don't know. Is it in your health? Is it in your family? Is it in your, in your career? Is it in your ministry? God is settling the matter by reason of the anointing. As the, as the anointing hits the head, the crowd is coming. As the anointing hits the head, if you read this book, the book of 1st King, you will realize that as soon as Adonijah heard that Solomon had been anointed king and David had appointed Solomon to the throne, the Bible says that he immediately repented. The Bible says right in that moment, Adonijah began to repent.
He says, it says right in that moment, the people that had conferred with him, that had conspired with him, flee, began to flee. They began to flee because something happens when the oil hits the head. Oh, it might be in an obscure place. You don't need to announce it. You don't need to announce it. You don't need to broadcast it. But something happens when, when the oil hits the head. When the oil hits the head, the chancer, the contender, the chancer and the contender, my goodness, I don't know whose word this is for. Tag a friend in the comment section below. The chancer, the contender, the self-made, the self-appointed, those sitting on thrones that are not this, as the oil hits the head. Adonijah. Adonijah. Adonijah will have to remove himself from that throne. Adonijah will have to repent. His followers will have to flee. Let there be disruption in the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus concerning your assignment. Let there be confusion in the camp of the enemy. Let there be disruption. Let them flee from one side to the next in the name of Jesus and let them leave your seat vacant in the mighty name of Jesus. In business, may your company seat be left vacant. In ministry, may your ministry sit be left vacant. Oh, in your family, may the seat that God has strategically positioned you on be left vacant. If you're not there, nobody sits there. In the name of Jesus, in the places where God has assigned you, let your seat be found vacant. Let Adonijah repent. Let his enemies repent. Let his enemies scatter in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. We are praying that there is, the enemies are scattering. The camps of the enemy are scattering. The meetings of the enemy are scattering in the name of Jesus. The strategy of the enemy is frustrated tonight in the name of Jesus. The agenda of the enemy is now and void tonight in the name of Jesus. Those self-made are shifting from the places where you are strategically positioned and called your own in the name of Jesus. By reason of the anointing, by reason of the anointing, I declare and decree that the crowds that should follow your anointed are following your anointed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak forth, speak forth success over your anointed in the name of Jesus. Don't worry. Don't worry. The anointing is settling the matter. I don't know who I'm talking to, but don't worry. Don't, I'm sent in the summer today to declare, don't worry. I don't even, I don't want to pass 45 minutes because it's over and above. I've said what I, I was sent on assignment to say today. Don't worry. The anointing is settling the matter. The, when the moment the anointing hits the head, the crowds will come from Norway. The crowds will come from the north, from the east, from the west to the south. From different nations with different tongues and tribes. I'm talking about the, the people that are coming to do business with your business. <laughs> I'm talking about the people that are coming to sit under your ministry. I'm talking about the people that have been sent to be divine helpers to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Though it happened in Gihon, a place of obscurity. Though you didn't look like it, Solomon, as you sat on that mule. Though you didn't have a crown over your head. Though you didn't have a coat of many colors going to Gihon. The moment the anointing hits the top of your head, your accusers have to repent in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that the accusers of these people's lives are repenting in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of them are generational accusers. Some of them are lineage accusers. Some of them are, 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 are bloodline accusers. They have accused a whole bloodline and said none of them shall ascend the throne. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare and decree that there is an overturn in the realm of the spirit. There is an overturn in the atmosphere. The oil of the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage is breaking breaking every generational lineage bloodline bondage in the name of Jesus those those that have been told that you are the son of Bathsheba 
You are the son of a prostitute. Those that have been told that you are, you are the son of a woman that was once married. Those that have been told that you, you come you don't come you, you from where you come from you don't deserve to be on the throne whatever excuse they have laid forth claim over that throne in the mighty name of jesus it is now and void it is now and void some of you have been told you you can't claim even lay claim to an inheritance because you are not a legitimate child in the lineage but in the mighty name of jesus if god has purposed it so Oh, if God has purposed it, so it shall be so in the name of Jesus. So Solomon, dust yourself up. <laughs> Come back to the city, riding on your mule. Solomon, come back to the city. C come back to the city. Courageous, bold, and strong. Get ready to ascend that throne. Because guess what's been happening as you have been to Gihon? Guess what's been happening as you have been down that valley, in that obscure place, being anointed by God? God has been settling every matter in the camp of the enemy. God has been settling and contending with the enemy on your behalf. God has been contending with the enemy on your behalf. The enemy is now shuddering by reason of the oil of the anointing over your head. So when he comes to meet with you, don't think he wants to contend with you. There is no longer power there. Oh, the anointing has settled the matter. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this word as you have released it to me. Father, I pray that you release it to your people in your own unique, special way. And tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus that as they listen to this word, that you pour out a new oil of anointing on the top of their heads. An anointing that topples the enemy. An anointing that overturns the assignment of the enemy. An anointing that overturns fake thrones. <laughs> In the mighty name of Jesus. An anointing that leaves their throne vacant. An anointing that leaves their position in society vacant. An anointing that leaves their position in, 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 in career vacant. An anointing that leaves their position in ministry vacant. In the mighty name of Jesus. Until they sit on it. Let the oil of the anointing make them great. Let the oil of the anointing expand and enlarge them. Let the oil of the anointing increase them. Let the oil of the anointing expand and establish them. Let the oil of the anointing do the work that it has been sent on assignment to do. Oh, we declare and decree tonight that the anointing is beginning to perform its job description. It is distinguishing. It is enlarging. It is increasing. It is establishing. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. I want you to tag somebody in the comment section below. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have a Bible study happening on House of Hosting Heaven. It is the, the, the Bible study of the book of First Kings. We've actually studied from the book of first, the first, the whole of first, the first chapter. This is just but a portion of the first chapter of, of, of the book of First Kings. There are nuggets that God is releasing in that Bible study that I believe will elevate your life, will elevate you in corporate, will elevate you in ministry, will elevate you in your place of assignment. So I want I want to encourage you to go on the YouTube channel and also follow those other Bible studies. There are 15 to 20 minutes long very short but they are very powerful and they carry nuggets that i believe will elevate you to your next level remember don't worry <laughs> don't worry don't 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 worry the anointing the anointing will do the talking oh some of you ought to just lay hands on your head and say god anoint me and you god anoint me and you Give me a unique anointing for this season and this time so that I don't need to come face to face with the enemy. But my anointing, once it hits the top of my head, it begins to contend with every enemy in my way, known and unknown. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Enjoy the evening. Tag a friend in the comment section below. Go on the YouTube channel, House of Hosting Heaven. Listen to the other Bible studies, and I will see you again very soon. Amen and amen. <laughs>